The internet is filled to the brim with questionable content, ranging from eccentrically entertaining to legitimately concerning. But regardless of the intent, it's something a lot of us tend to be drawn to. Whether it be in ARG or reality itself, this mysterious content has been prevalent throughout 21st century internet culture so far, and it shows no sign of stopping. But enough of the 2000s for now, and enough of the same modernish mysteries that have been covered to death. We're going to be diving into a truthfully disturbing website from the 90s that, for whatever reason, is affiliated with Disney. So with that being said, let's get into a Redditor's sinister find. Paranoia.com On February 18th, 2021, user Logical Elephant made a post on r slash internet mysteries. Disney owns Paranoia.com, which was a controversial slash kind of illegal web in 1995. I have noticed that searching for Paranoia.com redirects you to the Disney page. What puzzles me is that in 1995, Paranoia hosted many controversial or close to illegal content websites. I'm not sure if it is normal for them to buy these types of pages, but it seems strange to me. Here's the page in the Times when it still worked thanks to Wayback Machine. I have seen that in 2000 approximate, Paranoia closed and became a kind of French page and then it would redirect you to Disney.com. Being a controversial page at the time, has anyone heard about it? I've been researching and can't find any information about the page. For example, Rotten.com was also working at that time, and there is much more information about this. This means that Disney bought this domain, and if so, why would it buy such a domain? So Paranoia.com was a website that can now only be accessed via the Wayback Machine, since typing in the URL today just redirects you to Disney.com. The furthest you can go back is 1996, as this is the year that the Wayback Machine began archiving web pages. but by your first glimpse into the site, you can see it started in at the very least 1995. Going through this website is an endless rabbit hole. At the time of making this video, it's been saved 349 times on the archive, so there was a lot to look through, but whenever it comes to these Reddit posts, I always head to the comments before anything else. Before we proceed with the comments, I would like to say that this website contains some stuff that YouTube might not like, so while I wish it wasn't necessary, please bear with the laughable censoring in order to get around YouTube's disdain for these kinds of topics. Also, none of this is confirmed and this is for entertainment purposes, so Disney, don't come at me. User Hannah the Horrible commented, um, I'm more interested in the Paranoia.com site itself. Why isn't there videos on YouTube about it? Why is there almost no substantial Reddit discussions on it? There's literally a assistance hotline on their website. I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like this should have blown up. OP replied with, I find it very strange seeing that it was such a big forum, not something small and unknown, and I haven't found a search on it. I'll keep investigating and maybe in a few days I'll post something on this subreddit about the paranoia.com page itself because Something seems off about all of that. Into the Bounding Main added, This is so fascinating and I can't really put into words what this site evokes in me. It's this weird fusion of being utterly disgusted whilst oddly nostalgic for a period of internet I was barely even alive to experience. Doing a deep dive into the writings of these people and I'm quite fixated. Some of it reads as weirdly poetic even. Thanks so much for sharing. I think that Wayback Machine is such an internet gem. Discovering Paranoia.com is like going back to the times when the internet was free of censorship and how it is now. This caused a lot of illegal topic, of course, but it also evokes a very nice feeling of nostalgia even though I didn't live in 1995 either. I plan to investigate more on the page and perhaps add to this post or to another that makes one of the websites that I find most interesting. You could also post here the ones that most attract your attention. The post only garnered a total of 19 comments, so there wasn't much information in the original thread to go off of. OP did add some edits though, as there had been a few new discoveries. 
On HackerOne.com, you are able to access domains owned by a company or website. OP linked the domains that Disney owns and scrolling to the bottom confirms that yes, Disney does in fact own Paranoia.com. This doesn't necessarily mean they were behind it in 1995, but as of today, they definitely do own it. Paranoia.com was a website that hosted pages created by its users. This mix with the lack of control of the internet in 1995 caused things to be published about drugs, pastafarian, and maybe illegal stuff. It closed because its bandwidth had been reduced and asked to avoid using the server to keep what they had usable. The page wasn't unknown at all. Opie found that paranoia was mentioned in the book Cyber Feminism, Connectivity, Critique, and Creativity from 1999, and in Sexing the Caribbean, Gender, Race, and Sexual Labor from 2004, stating these books took info from the page as a bibliography to get information about Pastafarian. Paranoia was also listed on a Wired article about ad blockers being described as a lesser known ad page. The Austin Chronicle even gave it an honorable mention for best local website, referring to it as freedomfightingparanoia.com. In edit 4, OP suggested it being similar to a 4chan forum, but where everyone could make their own pages and discovered some people on the side supported the Unabomber, so it should be apparent by now that the site was full of immoral content. The owner was a man who went by the name Kevin Texas. Hackstory.es, a book released in 2014 that was about the history of the hacker community in Spain, primarily in the 90s, had a chapter about Paranoia.com, but OP couldn't read it without paying. It is an interesting page, without a doubt, but this does not solve why Disney would buy a page with this name. So at least we had a decent amount of more information to go off on, and now it was just time to start the deep dive. There were merely four other Reddit posts I could find regarding anything about Paranoia.com. Photo I found on defunct website, Paranoia.com. It's like Rotten.com, but you need to use the Wayback Machine and set it to 1996. It's a very interesting site. I spent an hour just surfing through it. Surprisingly, most of the website still works. It has very sketchy stuff on it, like a detailed guide on how to butcher and eat a human. Nice. After looking into it further, this image originated from the journal Snuff It Number no. 3, released by the Church of the Young in Asia with the selling point of eating fetus and voting for Unabomber, so we're back to that, and on their website, they give special thanks to Kevin Texas for this book. A finding of mine was that on one of Kevin's pages on Paranoia, he said Poppy Z. Bright is well worth reading. And clicking on the link leads you to this, where he recommends Love in Vain, which, if you haven't seen My Disturbing Reddit Mysteries Volume 2, you should so you can understand the lore, and I was like, hey, weird coincidence, but it is on theme, so... The other comment was when this user pointed out, Paranoia.com brings me to Disney.com. And two of the other posts I could find are of people realizing the same Disney phenomenon. Explain like I'm five. Can someone tell me how come when you put the in the URL paranoia.com it takes you to disney.com? I just typed paranoia.com on Google and it redirected me to Disney's website. So I randomly discovered this church called the Church of Young in Asia and was reading its Wikipedia page when I discovered they were affiliated with this website called paranoia.com in 1995. Wikipedia says that the website hosted sites that were controversial and bordered on being illegal, so I decided to google it and it literally redirected me to Disney.com immediately. Also, I couldn't for the life of me find any information that this website existed at all. Maybe it's just that the name is pretty common, but I googled every keyword I could alongside its name, .com included and all, and nothing comes up. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, I don't know. Unrelated, but a while back the URL www.notgay.com would redirect to Google. Still does. The last post I could find was Logical Elephant's second post, which was essentially a more put together or condensed version of the first post. 
The only notable things to mention from this post are OP affirming how the content of this site truly were concerning at times and some more info on Kevin Texas. Cedaville90 left a comment, this website had some many odd links. Thanks for sharing this, I've been diving in. I wonder what the former owner of the site is doing today. OP shared a now broken link that I thankfully was able to access via Waveback. It was an article Kevin wrote going over basic information about him titled The Man, The Myth, The Legend. He talks about paranoia in present tense, so I assume this was from the 90s. Some info about him, he even posted photos of his daughter, but I don't know what happened to him after closing the page. I know he's in Austin, Texas still, but haven't found anything else. I did find his Amazon account, some forums and other reviews by searching Kevin Texas, but not much else. The address for his business card was for the university. I'm curious, but oh well. What a pity that someone like him has been forgotten. He certainly built a very, very interesting page. It would be nice to pick his brain about it further. Indeed it would. I'm also pretty sure this is his YouTube channel, but I couldn't find much else that wasn't already said about him. I want to make it clear real quick that this Kevin Texas person is just some dude. Like, he wasn't behind all of the terrible shit on the site. He was the owner of it where anyone could post whatever they wanted. I'm pretty sure he was just very anti-censorship and wanted to host a site where people were free to say what they wanted. The Snuff at 3 connection is iffy, but my point is Kevin hasn't done anything besides create a very intriguing piece of internet history. I wanted to gather more about this website. Why Disney owned it now? It's accurate timeline and history since the Wayback Machine only starts at 1996, so now I'm at business. I had to search as many different configurations of Paranoia.com, Kevin Texas, Paranoia Disney, Kevin Texas Disney, etc. to try to get to the closest I could to the bottom of this. Here were my findings. In February 1994, Paranoia.com was created by Kevin. We are unable to explore the site until 1996, but the purpose of the site was to give people the ability to create any type of page they desired, which is why it ranges from collecting Pez to how to pass a drug test to cannibalism. It honestly kind of gives the energy of Reddit before Reddit. I was successful in finding multiple mentions of people's experiences with the site on what it was actually like back in the 90s. This person said they used to visit it in 96, 97, which was a clearinghouse of conspiracy theory stuff. It was fun reading and much better organized than most similar sites I've seen in the past few years. In 2007, someone made an article detailing the story of when Kevin Texas let him create the ultimate strip club list on paranoia. At the time, Paranoia.com was one of the coolest websites out there. Kevin sold space to all sorts of degenerates like me. And I was able to hunt down the Paranoia section of Hackstory.es mentioned by OP of the original Reddit post. It was simply described with immoral, illegal, and politically incorrect information. Here on Paranoia Art Gallery, users could submit their own artwork for Paranoia featuring various takes on their own logo for the site. So as you can probably see now, the type of content varied greatly because it was just a bunch of people creating what they deemed fit. There was an article written about it on everything2.com back in 2001 that stated it was serving up to 150,000 visitors per week before shutting down in mid-1998. And I saw this on the Church of the Young in Asia part of the site. This page has been accessed 33,032,159 times since April 13th, 1995. Oh yes, yeah, speaking of the church, after putting all these pieces together, I believe the reason the Church of Young in Asia gave special thanks to Kevin was not because he was literally affiliated, but because he let them host a page on the site. And slimecop.neocities.org had an excerpt about Paranoia.com where, according to them, the Unabomber thing is satirical and the whole point was free speech like I suspected earlier. It also contained GOAT, a blood spattered shock site that puts Rotten.com to shame. So after all these Rotten.com comparisons, I guess we can say that Paranoia takes the cake. 
Texas Monthly ended its article about paranoia with you gotta love computer people. There were coincidental little findings throughout the whole search, like Kevin's admiration for Poppy Z. Bright went both ways as she mentions both him and paranoia in an issue on her website back in 1997 and again in 98. Or, welcome to Matt's wonderful world of the web. It was such a fun journey to go through. I went into it thinking it was this horrific website, and yeah, putting Rotten.com to shame, it had its horrific corners without a doubt, but as does any place on the internet. Despite its thriving, in 1998, Paranoia.com sadly started giving nothing but the message of, This web server is now on the way to being completely down. Our bandwidth has been reduced, and you should avoid using this server to keep what we have usable. Most pages will have messages informing you of their new locations. On a Disobey.com article from October 1998 titled Ghost Sites, paranoia was described as dead but well-preserved. And with that, its short-lived but memorable lifetime came to an end. In April 1999, Paranoia read, Unfortunately, Paranoia.com is no more. All but one of these pages here have been moved since at least the summer of 1998. Please visit your favorite search engine to try to locate the page's new home. I believe it was moved to Microsoft.Paranoia.com at some point, but I could find legitimately nothing about this besides 10 captures on way back, the last being in May of 1998. In April 2001, it randomly turned into this French website with news and weather reports owned by Excite Europe Limited. I couldn't find any connection to former paranoia or to Disney. Only info was it was incorporated in November 1998 and dissolved in July 2010. And nature of business is other business activities. Nothing is documented on way back for the entirety of 2002. But in February of 2003, funnily enough my birth year, Paranoia redirects to go.com, another website of Disney's. So Disney has owned the domain since 2003. Go.com is also supposedly not secure. On March 30th, 2019, just a month after the 25th anniversary of Paranoia, it begins to redirect to Disney.com. In 2020, someone on a French website realizes this oddity. And on January 21st, 2022, Greg on this Hackaday article comments, Remember Paranoia.com? That was quite the fun site in the 90s. Much of it was a collection of links to other useful sites and it hosted quite a lot of useful tech info. It was also an email, IRC, and Usenet server along with website hosting bit of a nostalgia trip to look back on it with the web archive. Disney owns it now, just to redirect the Disney site. And that brings us to today. There was nothing else I could really find for an answer to this puzzling mystery. Anticlimactic, I know, I'm sorry, but I already had to like pick up scraps from around the internet to get any information at all. And you gotta go through paranoia yourself to adequately experience it. It isn't the kind of thing you can just put in a video and understand because there's seriously so much. But also like be careful what you click on if you're sensitive to certain things. I'm only here to give it spotlight because it is significant to the history of the internet, specifically that era. It's such a compelling website to go through. And to ponder why Disney would buy such a perplexing website, it obviously wasn't unknown at all. They bought the domain a mere five years after its shutdown, and considering I can still find recent mentions of people reminiscing of it, how could they have not known about its disconcerting contents? It would have either taken neglect or they were aware of it. The only theory I could find was them acquiring the domain if they planned on releasing a film or project titled Paranoia. Well, it's been 19 years and there's no paranoia from Disney yet. This Redditor claimed Disney owns Paranoia from 2013 and this person claimed they own Paranoia from 2018. 
but there was absolutely zero evidence I could find that suggests they own either, and since they conflict on which movie Disney supposedly owns, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's false. I used to watch Disney conspiracy videos when I was a little kid. Illuminati, Backwards Song, this scene in The Lion King, the whole deal. I think it's genuinely what got me into mystery type of content in the first place when I was seven or eight, so creating this video was a very full circle type of thing for me. This whole experience feels like that in a way with the Poppy Z Bright mentions and Mickey Mouse being shown on the website. While we at least do have a better understanding on the fascinating site itself and are able to dissect this piece of internet history, I suppose we don't have a solid theory on the reasoning behind why Disney bought Paranoia. And we may never know the truth. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it can encourage someone else to look into the strange mystery. Maybe someone out there can solve it or maybe all we will ever have is the archive of Paranoia.com. Either way, thank you.